welcome to Field Sports Britain. I'm Dom Holtam, coming up on this week's show. Results of the Rat Fest. Roy brings out the big guns to try and claim the prize. Cornish Delight. We check out some top game cookery at the Cornish Food Festival. But first, I'm swapping rifles for rods as we set out in pursuit of Barbel and Xander on the River Trent. I've never fished this stretch of water near Newark before, but I know it's one of the best in the country for Barbel and the enigmatic Xander. Which, for those of you not in the know, is a predatory fish that looks like a cross between a pike and a perch. When we arrive mid-afternoon, the prime spots under Collie and Weir are already taken. People are even queuing up for these prized pegs. Some of the guys here have been fishing this part of the Trent for 40 years. So as they prepare to pack up after a day's competition, it seems wise to have a word with them about strategy and why the barbel is such an awesome fish to catch. Once you've caught a barbel, there's nothing better. You know, yeah. we, we take people, novices with us and kids and everything else. And once they've, once they've had the feel of that barbel, yeah. I can assure you it's near, near, they get hooked straight away. I kind of wish you were my uncle, Trevor, because uh, <laughs> I'm, I might have been introduced to these a bit earlier in life. Yeah, I'm sure you would. I mean, I've got my <laughs> nephew here fishing with us today. And uh, honestly, there's no, we've been on the seven, we've been to Ireland, we've been on the River Wye, we've been everywhere and, 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 and up north and that. And there's nothing better for consistency, honestly. It is the best. In my opinion, this is the best venue, along with Omar, I'll take them equally, in the country, without a doubt. The barbel keep them coming back for more, and they've had some real red letter days in their time. And I've got 13 barbel in there, and I would say I've got 70, 70 odd pounds. There's some decent ones in there, but some small ones as well. Yeah, but, but they, they really do fight those barbel, don't they? That day I had the 234, I had to take two days off work to recover from it. <laughs> My gaffer won it all, please. Are we having him out, mate? Because these guys are competing in a match, they're using keep nets to allow them to weigh in their catch. This is not something I'll be using myself, and we'll make every effort to get those fish back into the water as quickly as possible. Yeah. What are you having for first weight? 75, 75. 75. After the weighing, we see the fish put back, and we get some great shots of them disappearing across the gravel. Fishing with me today are some old friends from school. We all enjoy catching up a couple of times a year for a bit of a fish and a chat. Matt and Glenn know this spot well and are after Xander, while me and Al are going for barbel. And once a barbel bug has bitten, it's difficult to shake off. You've caught big pike before, yep. you've caught lots of trout. Yep. Describe for the person who's never caught them before what it's like to suddenly hook into a barbel. Yeah, honestly, they are absolutely amazing fish to catch. The power of the barbel is beyond belief. Well, I do, I do stick to light tackle. There's an element of the sporting nature which I enjoy when when I'm fishing. It's something that, uh, if you haven't tried it, you'd heartily recommend. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I, I've never known a fish fight as hard as barbel, pound for pound. Definitely. Out of all of us, Glenn is the most experienced fisherman. As we've been gassing, he's been concentrating on his fishing and has already got himself a nice little pike. Nah, I thought that Xander was off. On the mat, Glenn. Yeah, but yeah, I think the oops have come out anyway. No, they have, yeah. yeah. A self disgorging pike having had one of those on film for a while, Matt. It's always been making a mess of it, hasn't it? That is uh, not a Xander. No, unfortunately. <laughs> so it's not a target species, but you're always in danger of catch. Where, where you find Xander, you're going to find pike, yeah, aren't you? Yeah, of course, you're right, yeah. You know, the two go together, but it's only a small one, but. It's not much more than a live bait for you, Glenn, is it? Uh, they're all welcome, mate. <laughs> they're all welcome. Glenn has always been a fanatic carp fisherman, but he was introduced to Barbel a few years ago and he's never looked back. I think some people look down on coarse fishing compared to game fishing, but Barbel have a reputation for being ferocious fighters. Oh yeah, the fight's unbelievable. The take's unbelievable. It's the, the power of the water 
the fish. Because they are river fish, aren't they? Yeah, they like they fast are. flowing water. Yeah, that's right, they are. And you get the big fish, the small fish, they all fight really, really hard. And you've got to really look after them when you're putting them back. You know, they take some time to revive. You need to hold them in the land of the net if it takes five, 10, 15 minutes. You yeah. know, you've got to look after them. But so they'll fight themselves to a standstill? Yeah, they will. They'll virtually fight themselves to death. To, to be totally honest, that is what they do. Yeah. You know, they don't give up until they're in that net. So you need strong tackle to make sure you land them and that sort of thing. And then of course there's a Xander and he's feeling reasonably confident that he'll land one as soon as it gets dark. Probably the hardest fish I've ever tried to catch by the Xander like resistance. They no. Very finicky biters, they'll come, they'll hit your bait, they'll move off, they'll come back again and I've always got takes when I've been Xandering, not always connected but should, should get, should get some action. Yeah, should do. Before the light goes, Glenn talks us through the rig he will be using. Okay, so this is your end rig, Glenn. It's quite yes. simple. Yep. Talk us through it. Simplicity, ledger boom, lead, four ounce scrip of lead because of the tide, you know, the fast flowing pace of the river. It'll hold the bottom nicely. Goes onto your 20 pound wire trace with a single size eight treble hooked into the fish which I like to cut in half to let the juices and the scent out for the Xander. It's all simplicity, there's nothing to snag anything, it's all free running and the Xander picks the bait up straight through. It can move, it doesn't feel any resistance. That's right, the resistance, as resistance free as we can get it, yeah. considering the power of this river. So Xander don't have the best PR out there. Um, a lot of course anglers don't like them, uh, they think that they damage the course stocks and uh, we've been told that some fish have been found dead on the bank here where obviously someone's caught them, killed them and thrown them away which is a real shame. Stuff like cormorants do a lot more damage uh, than uh, a predatory fish such as a zander would do. Um, I think part of the problem is that they're non-native. They were introduced into the relief channel years ago um, and they've since spread far and wide. But I think that they're going to have a bit of a uh, renaissance. I think that people enjoy catching them. They're an impressive looking fish when you see them on the bank and uh, hopefully they'll acquire the status that perch and pike have amongst the, the predator set. I certainly hope so. I certainly hope we get to see them in action tonight. As darkness falls, we get a shout from Matt and Glenn along the bank. Matt thinks he has his first ever Xander on the line. Look at its eyes, look at its eyes from. Yeah! Yes! Xander! <laughs> Good man! Nice one. What tilt's on that, mate? I've got an unlocking mat back here. Yeah. Look, how many see the eyes? Lovely. So that's what we come for. Looking fish, isn't it? That's what we come for. Brilliant. Matt is over the moon, and it really is an amazing looking fish. Those big, reflective eyes showing exactly why the Xander is such a supreme night hunter. Yeah. Well chuffed. First Xander. Been pike fishing about 15 years. Three attempts, aborted attempts at catching a Xander. Beautiful. God, it's a really funny, finicky bite, wasn't it? It, it was, didn't yeah, yeah. It's just what Glenn explained it would be like, though. It's quite a small mouth compared with the pike, isn't it? See, well, the bites are finicky. A pike would have just hoovered that bait up and would have started swallowing it. I can't get over how different it feels to any other course fish other than the perch. You oh, rub that way, it's like really a bit of sandpaper. Yeah, it is like a sea bass. So this is just letting the oxygen get back into their gills and let them recover for a little bit. Yeah. You see he's getting his strength up now, isn't he? So he's starting to work his fins now, look, isn't he? Yeah. Just as that bit of excitement is over with the safe return of the Xander, Al shouts to us that he also has a fish. It's a lovely looking barbel. Fish fought really, really hard in this current. It's quite deep out there and it stayed very, very low. And then eventually we turned his head and, and up he came. So beautiful fish. I'll put him back. I think I promise to talk. So it's a good start to our session and enough for the cameraman to call it a night claiming that he doesn't do tents. In the end we get 20 barbel, 3 Xander and a couple of pike between us. Exciting fishing for exciting fish. While I've been fishing for barbel, David has been fishing for facts. Over to the spectacled one on the new stump. This is Field Sports Britain News. 
First up, and following on from our film about Xander fishing, we contacted the Environment Agency to find out what the official line is about this non-native species. We were told where Xander have become established, you can return them to the water without committing an offence. But under rod court bylaws, the Environment Agency will also permit this species to be killed and removed. However, you may contravene local club rules by doing this, where they state that all fish have to be returned. The Countryside Alliance Foundation's campaign to get outdoor education on the national curriculum is gaining momentum. The Alliance's campaigns team is pushing the message hard at all the major party conferences, running this film made by Field Sports Channel. You can lobby your MP on this very important issue via the Alliance's website www.countrysidealliance.org.uk. With one hand the RSPB gives, the other it takes away. Despite our news last week about how the RSPB is working with shooting interests on Langham Moor in Dumfriesshire, it's continuing its campaign against Scottish gamekeepers. Its new report, called The Illegal Killing of Birds of Prey in Scotland in 2010, claims that bird poisonings are linked to driven grouse shooting. Bisley Live is on this weekend. The brand new game fair is offering a huge lineup of prizes in its shooting competitions. They include a brand new Blazer R8 rifle, three CZ rimfire rifles, a Ruger rimfire rifle, 16,000 hull cartridges, and 2,000 pounds worth of bushware vouchers. Competitions range from a 100 bird simulated sporting flush to the Blazer running deer challenge. The show runs on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Entry is £18 for adults and £10 for children. Have you got £17.5 million to spare? That's what estate agents are asking for Milden, the priciest sporting estate on the market in Scotland. Sitting in the Angus Glens with 20,000 acres, it includes eight miles of the North Esk and three recently improved moors, making it, say agent CKD Galbraith, the holy grail of grouse shooting. Search for it on www.ckdgalbraith.com .co.uk. And finally, we can announce the winner of our biggest rat competition. Last week, we told you how an 18 inch rat shot in Hartlepool inspired us to offer a BSA Meteor Mark 7 air gun worth £185 to whoever sent in a picture of the biggest rat. Well, Brian Hughes from Northern Ireland did well with this one. Shot on his girlfriend's farm using Pulsar N550 night vision, its body alone is a foot long. Meanwhile, David Uglo, who's the Thatcher, got this one with a piece of hazel while clearing out a barn. Those are size 12 boots. But the winner is Ryan Bleakley. He was out on a farm the other day when he thought he'd seen a cat. He ran back to his car, got the air gun and shot the large rodent. It measured in at more than two feet, nose to tip of tail. Well done, Ryan. Air gun on its way. You're now up to date with Field Sports Britain News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thanks very much David and congratulations to the winner of the BSA Meteor. Now over to someone who didn't win it. Unlucky Roy. Now viewers are not the only ones busy to break our ratting record. Sledgehammer Nut comes to mind as Roy warms up the digger destined for a part of the garden that needs a bit of landscaping. We don't think it's a complete coincidence there happens to be a few rat holes in the vicinity as well. Roy may have accounted for a few of his rodent friends with the air rifle last week, but that isn't going to eradicate the rat population. So, time to get heavy-handed. After sitting up all night waiting for those rats, and we, uh, we only got about a dozen, I, uh, I decided that we were going to get the big guns out and we were going to go for it now. So, uh, no messing about, we've got the digger, we've got the guns, we've got the people with sticks, now all we need is to find the rest of the rats. What follows is a montage of squeals from shooters and excited cameramen, as well as quite a few dead rats. There goes one! There goes one! There goes one! Down there! They are! They are! They are! Come on! Loads! 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 Big fuckers! Shot, round field. <laughs> 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 Hang on, yeah, chuck him over, we want some for the end. Hang we on. have to add that Roy filmed a lot of this oh, himself. Oh, you <laughs> now that is just unfair. Oh, you 
There are some decent sized rats, but the rat's red mist descends, and it's all about the body count. Is Roy now satisfied he finally has the upper hand? That was definitely more effective, wasn't it? That was a good bit of fun. I really enjoyed that. But, uh, yeah, apart from having a rat thrown at me, I, oh, it scared the life out of me. But, uh, you know, that was the only low point of the day. But uh, it definitely worked. But unfortunately, we got a bit carried away. We were only meant to start on the bonfire, but um, then every other mound of earth ended up getting done as well. So, uh, you know, it was good, good giggle, though. I enjoyed that. So, if you need to do some excavating in the near future, why not invite some friends round and make a day of it? And finally, we're off to Cornwall to sample some gourmet game. So you think you know Cornwall. Palm trees, beaches, mackerel fishing. Well, there's another side to it. Trout, partridges and delicious deer. We're at the Cornwall Food and Drink Festival to find out more. where Cornwall's top chefs and food producers come together to promote the best the county has to offer. And game is a major theme. Here's Ollie Jackson from the Trilla Warren estate. Today I've been demonstrating uh, venison carpaccio with a walnut cream. And then also we did a dish with pigeon. That was a pigeon salad with orange, pomegranate, molasses, pine nuts and orange. Everyone knows beef, everyone knows pork, everyone knows lamb. But game's got its own unique flavour. Um, I mean, there's such a wide range of grouse, partridge, pheasants. Rabbits and pigeons need to be more on the menu as, as they're kind of vermin rather than and helping out the farmers at producing our local vegetables and stuff. Mark Devonshire shows more ways of buying, preparing and cooking game. The idea of me today was being here to promote um, game and Dominic today was rabbit. Um, because there's lots of rabbits around and we don't use enough of them and they're classed as pests so the idea of using rabbit in our everyday, everyday menu is something we want to put out to, to the general public in our everyday cookery. I don't think people like using rabbit because of the idea that they come across as little fluffy rabbits that children love, they're cartoon characters, everyone loves rabbit. As soon as you say we're going to have rabbit for dinner they're not interested and they kind of go no no we can't eat rabbit so we like the idea that we can use rabbit in everyday food and we can kind of get over that hurdle. Now, let's turn to fish, but not Rick Stein style seafood. Here is Ben Palmer from Barclay House to talk about brown trout. Now, I love doing uh, shows at uh, festivals and demonstrations. You know, I like to show the public how easy things are to do using uh, all the things that we can get our hands on in Cornwall. You know, it's such a fantastic larder. So, you know, why not get in front of them and show them how easy it is to do things and what you can do with it, really. All this delicious food is making me hungry for a spot of shooting or fishing. I talk to the family and we decide to go to Colliford Lake. They like the idea because they like water. I like it because it is one of Cornwall's premier brown trout destinations. Stop off at the famous Jamaica Inn in Bolventor to buy a fishing permit from the gift shop, £12.50 for adults, £3.50 for children. Pick up one day rod licenses online, £3.50 for adults, free to children. Tricky bit, extract the children from the gift shop and off we go. Well that was easy, now the bit that's going to require all my skill and cunning, teaching the children how to fish. Actually, they take to fly casting well. Even the dog is happy. Now all we have to do is put a little fishy on our little dishy. Of course, to some people, the thought of eating wild fish and animals is horrifying. Or is it? Back at the festival, we conduct a blind tasting. Is it ostrich or something like that? No. No? Something a bit closer to home. Closer to home. <laughs> it's rabbit. Is it rabbit? Ooh. Not bad. Mmm. Fair enough, I'm game, and it probably is as well. I like rabbit, but I don't really want any. I've just really had a lot to eat. <laughs> I like the flavour and the texture of it. Tried rabbit before. Mm -hmm. I've cooked it before. You've cooked it before. Oh, that's really good. Where do you where do you get your rabbit? I, I shoot it. 
<laughs> don't think it's rabbit. It could be. It is actually rabbit. Mm. Surprised, we were. Now, one of the big events of the food festival is the magnificent Seven Dinner. Not Yule Brinner and Gang. These are seven of Cornwall's top chefs, producing a course each for the great and the good of the county. Chefs like Nathan Outlaw, who has a two Michelin starred restaurant in Rock, Neil Haydock of the Hotel and Extreme Academy in Watergate, Paul Ripley of Rick Stein's Seafood Bar in Falmouth, and the last two, Chris Eden of the Driftwood Hotel and Paul Ainsworth of Number 6 in Padstow and Reggiano's in the Square. These two are joining forces to produce the main course that's sponsored by Country Sports Southwest. Each chef has to introduce their dish to diners in an interview with BBC Cornwall's Daphne Skinnard. Behind the scenes, the kitchen is a lot more fraught. Are you great rivals? Uh, no, I mean, we're, none of us are rivals. Um, we're friends. We come here to, to, to achieve... Um, what we, you know, what we should be doing, achieving together, and that is showcasing Cornish produce and, and and the cuisine and the and the stars of, of, of all of our um, restaurants and, and our sh as chefs of how we've been trained. You know, a bit more the Cornish way to be kind of friendly rather than Ramsay in your face type, isn't it? Yeah, of course it is. Yeah, you know, um, I, that's something something I've certainly noticed moving down here. You know, everyone, you know, gets on well. You know, life's too short to be like that. You know, you may as well embrace it. We've got a lovely a lovely sort of community in the West Country, um, you know, so I think it's, uh, I think it's, you know, just get on and all work together. So what is Country Sports South West trying to achieve? Well, the, the project's about encouraging people to come down and shoot and fish, and we can't do that unless we've got a market for the, the meat, at the game meat at the end of it. So this is to encourage people to eat game and try it and um, put it in their diet every day, really, or every week. And Cornwall is, you know, know to be about fish, but you're yes. saying it's a lot more than that. It is, yeah, because it, it's about sea fish mainly, um, and we want people to know there's sustainable river fish in trout that people can fish, and that there's this wealth of game uh, in Cornwall, um, and we, you know, that reigns from uh, pheasant through to venison to rabbit to pigeon, and and it's all done by shooting. And, and shooting is the sport that gives this product that people can eat, which is great. It's success on a plate in Truro, but how am I and the family getting on at Colliford? It's a gorgeous, wild, dramatic landscape. Nothing bucket and spade about this. But shooting is a lot easier. There you get a gamekeeper or shooting instructor to help you. Here the children have to put up with me. Then our luck changes. Despite all the rock throwing, we hook and land one. It is not the biggest brown trout in the world, and it may be the unluckiest, but it smiles all round as we head back to the car. For more information about shooting, fishing or riding in Cornwall, visit www.countrysportssouthwest.co.uk This has been Field Sports Britain. Thanks for joining us on the banks of the River Trent, and don't forget... So like us, subscribe, face tweet or anything else by pressing the buttons round and about. We'll be back next week. I hope you'll join us. In the meantime, it might not be luxury, but it beats working. <laughs> <laughs>